Hi everyone, I'm Mike with Comp3 Interactive and today we're going to take a look at using scriptable objects to make an item database system. Now this system could be used for a loot, uh, your looting system or a generic backend uh, containing every one of your items within your game. You can access them whenever you like. Now when it comes to scriptable objects, what are scriptable objects? Well put basically, the containers for large amounts of data. Uh, just like mono behaviors, they inherit from the Unity base class, so they have all the functionality that you're used to already. Uh, you don't really have to learn much else. Uh, and one of the key benefits is the fact that using a asset menu, you can create multiple different instances of your scriptable object type. Now, let's jump into it and I'll show you what I mean. As you can see here, I've got a little bit of a sample project set up. I'll just give you a quick walkthrough so you know exactly what I've done. I have currently an empty game object as a control object. We'll come back to that later. I have a canvas with an area for an item's name, description, cost, sprite, and again, two more buttons which we'll come to towards the end of the tutorial. As you can see here, I've just got a little bit of a... Um, a folder structure set up for all of my game elements. So we'll start by creating our item script. So we'll right click, create C sharp script, and we'll just call it item and open that up in Visual Studio. Now we can start by removing our start and update functions along with our two system namespaces. And this is the class that we want to make a scriptable object. Now to do that, we no longer want to inherit from mono behavior. We want to change this to scriptable object. And to fully utilize that, we need to add an attribute. So above your class declaration, we'll put in some square brackets and we'll have create asset menu and then a pair of parentheses. Now within this, we need two extra parameters. We need a file name which will set equal to, I don't know, what do we want? New item. And secondly, we need a menu name, which we'll have as assets slash, assets slash item. Okay, so what that'll do then is the file name is the default file name given to any new instance of your item scriptable object and the menu name I'll show you that now if we skip back over to unity if we right click our items folder could be anywhere hover over create we don't have it why don't we have it I haven't saved if we save the script head back over to unity and let it compile now we right click and click create we see our assets folder and item and when we click item we see we have a new item now currently this is empty we haven't populated it with anything so we'll just go ahead and delete that one for now and we'll start work on our actual class so to match the ui elements that we've already set up we'll create a public string item name, public string item description, a public integer value item cost, and also a public sprite item sprite. Now we can just make this look a little bit better in the inspector. We can add the text area attribute to our description to give us a little bit more space in the inspector. Uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about uh, attributes like this, I do have a, a tutorial on my channel that goes into a little bit more depth on those, so make sure you check that one out. And now we just need one more thing in this class, and that will be another string, and this one will be for an item ID. Now the item ID will have to be a unique ID for each individual item that you have, but the purpose of the ID will come into play a little bit later on. Okay, so let's start by creating some items. We jump back over to Unity. 
Now, if we go through uh, create assets item, we can see up here on the top right that a scriptable object now has the parameters that we've set within the class. So let's create an apple, nice and sweet. <laughs> I will call it apple description. This is an apple. Anyone who's seen any of my previous videos know that I am terrible with descriptions and story writing, so that'll have to do. And our apple will cost 10 gold. Now I already have a couple of sprites down here, so we'll drag and drop a little red apple into our sprite. Let's create the next two. So we'll do again, create item, and then we'll call this one card, item name card. This is the Ace of Hearts. That'll cost 25, and we'll drag the card over. And finally, one more. This one will be a portion. Call it portion. This heals you. And that'll cost 100. This larger box for the description here is what I was talking about earlier with the text area attribute. Gives you that little bit more space just uh, just for the bit a bit more meaty text, if you will. And just to finish off our portion, we'll drag and drop that sprite in. Now, let's go back to the Apple and start filling in this item ID. So, we'll prefix our items with IT. And we'll just give it a unique number, so 0001. Card, again, it's an item, IT0002. And portion, IT0003. Now, those can be any strings that you like. Could be an integer value, could be a string, could be whatever you like, as long as it's unique. Uh, you could even, if you're, uh, if you're fancying a challenge, you could try and come up with a way to automatically generate a unique item ID string and if you do come up with something like that I'd uh, I'd like to see it so you could pop a link to your video or your itch IO page anything like that just drop anything in the comments and I'll take a look at it now potentially you're gonna have a lot more items than this in your game we're just gonna use these three as our example but now we need uh, we need somewhere for them to go so we'll just create a new C sharp script and we'll call it uh, item database. Now if we open up item database in Visual Studio, we can remove the start and update functions. And again, we want to make this a scriptable object. And again, we're going to add an asset menu, but this time it's going to be file name is going to be new item database and the menu name we're going to put it into our assets folder and then create a new folder called databases and then again call it item database and within our item database class all we're going to need is a public list of a class item and we'll call it all items that's it for the item database class short sweet and to the point now all we want to do is create our instance of our item database and drag all our items over into it so if we right click on our databases folder that I've created here create assets we see our new databases folder and item database and we'll just call that item database now as you can see here we've got our all items list so what we can do we can lock the inspector using the little lock symbol up in the top right here select all three of our items and then just simply drag and drop onto the uh, what do you want to call it the parent name where it says all items and we drag and drop that and it adds all three into our all items list And I think that may be a good time to leave it there for today. Uh, make sure you check out the second part of this video where we'll continue building on our controller class. 
and uh, give it its full functionality. I'll see you again soon.